Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about um, how magnetic fields um, are caused by current carrying wires and the magnetic fields that are caused by just moving charges. Yeah, so um, last unit we only were concerned with how charges, when they move through some external magnetic field, how they get pushed. But what causes the fields in the first place? We know what causes electric fields. What causes electric fields are just positive and negative charges. But what causes... What causes the fields for magnetic fields? What is the source of them? And the source of magnetic fields is moving charges. The charges have to be moving, and so when they're moving, they create magnetic fields. It turns out that um, whether or not something is moving is all relative, so so are magnetic fields. The strength of a magnetic field must be just relative to your frame of reference. Okay, so um, let's take a look. Let's, let's first just deal with um, a wire, the magnetic field due to a wire, and we're not going to worry about calculating the strength of the field, just the direction of the field for right now. So let's say there's a wire here, and let's say the current is heading that way. And it turns out if this wire has current heading that way, then there is a, a circular magnetic field going around it, and the way that it circulates is um, it, if you put your, take your right hand, and if you put your thumb in the direction of the current and you wrap your fingers, if you wrap your fingers around the wire, then that tells you that the magnetic field is going, um, say right here, it's going that way. And right here, right here, the field is going that way. And right here, it's going down. And so, yeah, so what I'm saying then is if you put a compass, say, right here, then the compass, if the current's heading that way, if you put it right above the wire, then the, the, the compass should point that way. It should point that way. But if you put it right next to the wire, then it should point down. See how my fingers are curling around like this? If I put it underneath the wire, then it should point that way. And if I put it to the left of the wire, just, just barely to the left of the wire, then it should point up. And again, I'm just doing um, the, the right-hand rule for that. Okay? So the field, if I were going to show you... Um, this circle would represent the direction of the field. It's circular rings around here. And to know which direction, whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever way it's going, it has to do with the right-hand rule. If the current were heading the other way, then you would have to take your thumb like this and wrap your, your fingers around, and that would tell you that a compass would point up right here, and right here would point to that way. And right here to the right would point down. And right here would point that way. Okay? So that's how um, the magnetic field works around a wire. Now, as you might guess, uh, the stronger the current, the, the greater the current, the greater the field. Also, how close you are to the wire matters. The closer you get to the current, or excuse me, the closer you get to the wire, the more the, the bigger the magnetic field. Okay? It turns out that um, a charge also... Just a charge moving along also has a magnetic field attached to it. And that's just a little tougher to see what's happening there. So um, let me show you what happens when a charge is moving. Say, um, let's say the charge is moving, a positive charge is moving this way with a speed V. Now, um, what happens is you get these, again, circular magnetic fields. You put your thumb in this direction and it curls like that. So the magnetic field's going around like that in circles. But it doesn't just make circles here. It makes circles all the way down the way. Okay? They just get weaker and weaker. Now to show this in two dimensions, what I'm going to try and do is um, I'm going to just show you where the field is, inter is intersecting the plane of this paper. And so if I take my right hand and curl my fingers, it looks like um, right here, in the plane of this paper, if I put a compass here, if I put a compass right here, um, gosh, which way is it going to point? So let me, let me see. If I put my thumb that way, it looks like it's pointing down. So I'm going to put an X here. And then um, on the other side of this plane, it's going to point, it's going to be pointing up. So I'm going to put a, a dot there. Okay. Now, um, it turns out then that um, if I go out a little further, there's still a field there, but it's just going to be a little weaker. So let me make this field like really heavy 
to show you that that's a, that's a strong field right there. But if I go out, it gets a little lighter. I'll make it a, a little smaller. And I'll make this, this dot a little smaller. Once again, what's happening here is the field's going around in circles, and I'm only drawing just the where the where what direction the field is going in the paper. Like if I went right above this thing, right above this thing, the field is going that way. And right below this piece of paper, right below it, my hand is down below, it's going that way. Okay? Now, um, as you go out, then, the field gets less and less. In fact, make these really little and really little. Um, also, um, there is a, that's one ring. Remember, uh, magnetic fields are closed loops, and so this is like a closed loop, kind of like this. This was a closed loop. Okay. And so um, it turns out, then, that if um, you are a little bit over this way, this field isn't as going to be as big as the field right here. So it's, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller there too. And then I'm a little bit smaller still and a little bit smaller still and a little bit smaller now and a little bit smaller now and a little bit smaller now. Okay, so, and then if I go a little further out, it turns out that um, this is smaller still. I'm making, those may look like dots, but those are X's here. I'll make them look a little bit bigger. X's, and they're looping around and coming over here. So this dot is a little smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay. Um, same thing with right behind it, right? Well, not right behind it, but right here. This There's still an X here due to this charge, but it's going to be smaller. It'll probably be about the same size as that one. And this will be about the same size. And that's a little smaller. And so on. And then this is this gets smaller, too. Okay. And then um, a little further back, it's even smaller. Okay, so where is the field the biggest? It's the biggest when you're close to the charge and you're um, at a right angle to it. In fact, um, the field along this line, the magnetic field along that line, anywhere on there, B is equal to zero due to this. B is equal to zero. Okay, so um, it turns out that if I wanted to know, say, the, the actual strength of the field, say right here, a distance r away. If I wanted to know that strength, then you were a distance r away. And let's call this angle theta, the angle between um, the velocity and r. And we want to know the field right here. Then um, you use something called the, the, the law of Bios of Art to get that. And so I'm going to come back in another video and tell you about the law of Bios of Art for calculating just what the field strength should be there. We already know what the field's direction is right here. What is the field's direction at that point in space? It's going to be um, it's going to be directly out of the paper, directly perpendicular to the paper. But it's a, but it's going to be um, a little smaller because it's it's not right here. If that were right here, it would be much bigger. But because it's at a, at an angle, it's going to be a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'll come back in another video and tell you about the law of Biosavart.